protected. We need to be concerned about those that are being, that are paid less than livable wages. That's who we need to be concerned with. Before I became the first Latina ever to open a law office in the Inland Empire, Riverside, San Bernardino County, I had a journey similar to so many of you. I'm the proud daughter, just as Jose mentioned, I'm the proud daughter of immigrants. My mother and father were raised in a little town, Jalos, Potitlan, Jalisco. I love going back. I don't get to go back to Tucson anymore. They just had Carnaval and here I am. Oh, you want one? <laughs> there are lots of people in my life that are my heroes, my sheroes. I want to tell you about one in particular. You're going to guess, and I'm going to tell you already, it's my mother. When my mother was three years old, her father died. He was up here in quite close to Sacramento, he was involved in an auto versus train accident. He was killed. He was trying to make a better life for his family. So he left my grandmother with her five children, a very young widow at the age of 25. My mother at the age of 14 married my dad, who was eight years her senior. And when she was 19, she joined him here in the United States. And then they raised their family. There were six of us. With the six of us, I've got to tell you, my mom and my dad, they taught us about hard work. They had us in the piscas, onions and grapes. Now, my mom and my older sister also picked strawberries, but I was a little, my, I, guess, I guess I have strong hands or something, because I'd squeeze those strawberries. <laughs> <laughs> So I, my, myself and the rest of my kids and the rest of my siblings, we stayed at the camper shell while my mom and my sister picked the strawberries after we had already picked the onions. That's how we bought our school clothes. Otherwise, you know, that's okay. You know, you go to the segunda and you buy your clothes and they're ironed really well and you're, you know, you've got one of a kind clothes, right? But, and my mom also did a lot of sewing. That was good. But by working in the fields, picking onions and grapes, we were also able to buy new clothes come September. Maybe they were limited, but we had new clothes come September. One of the things that I talked about also a few months ago is how my mother and my father, they saved their money. They worked hard. They saved all their money. <laughs> Tortillas, frijoles. Arroz, my dad had the meat. The rest of us had beans and rice. It's okay, that's why we're so healthy. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Applaud, because you know we all have beans and rice. <laughs> the, because my mom and my dad saved, they knew about this American dream. The American dream is that you want your kids to do better than you. And you also want to buy a house for them to live in. It's now becoming a little impossible now, but by the time my mom and dad, my mom was about 20 when I figured out the math, she was 20 when she and my dad bought the first house. Thousand dollars. Bought their first house. Since then, they have bought and, and, and kept their houses. And I'm so proud of her. My staff, Inez Canela, my, my district director right here, we're organizing the American Dream Home Ownership in, in a month. And I, I said, Mom, I want you to be one of the speakers. A mi pa que me metes. I said, Mom, nobody knows how to do this better than you. You know how to save money. You know how to make sure that you, that you have good credit. You know how it is to work hard. You know how it is to go look for a house, to get financing. Nobody knows better than you. A mi no me metan. You can tell my story, but no me metan a mi. <clears throat> her love for her family, her love for her community is so great. I have people coming up to me and telling me how much my mother has influenced them. In the church, across the street, they had Bible study and had catechism, all in English. My mom went to go talk to the priest and she said, you need things in Spanish, otherwise you're not going to get the kids in here, because many of them are immigrants. She started the Spanish ministry across the street now. That's probably the biggest part of the, 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 of the church now, there at the church. We had, she's also got this sense for social justice. She doesn't like bullies. She doesn't like 
people taking advantage of others, and the priest will remain nameless. But we had some kids that were ready to do their first communion. And my, uh, some of the parents came over and talked to my mom and said, Senora Jesse, no me van a dejar. What? They're not going to let you do your first communion? No, because one of the rules is the kids can't miss class, and the other is that the parents have to come in for at least three of the classes. Most of the parents have kids. They can't come in. They're working. They can't come in. There goes my mom to the priest. <laughs> this is, you're not going to do this. Yeah, but Senora Jesse, you know we have rules, and you know we tell them that they, can, they don't have to come. Says, no, 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 no. You have to take each child exactly where they are. They've done the best that they could, and they deserve to do the First Holy Communion, and you will let them do the First Holy Communion. <laughs> Those three kids did the First Holy Communion. <laughs> that priest is one of her, um, one of her uh, he just admires her so much, because I see him all the time. He says, how is your mother doing? He says, I still remember. She made me do the right thing. And that's what it's all about. That's what we do. Sometimes people feel that they need to do their thing and it's against us. It isn't against us. Because what is, another thing that Cesar Chavez said is, preservation of one's own culture does not require contempt or disrespect for others' cultures. Yesterday, with Javier Becerra, we also brought him here to Ontario. There to Ontario. He wasn't as welcomed as he was in San Bernardino. You may have read in the paper that Donald Trump supporters were there. They were so disruptive that they did not allow him to speak. They said, well, where, or, where were your parents from? Were they illegals? We had assembly member Blanca Rubio, who tells her story that when she was six years old, she was deported. She came back, and now she's our assembly member. She was not allowed, she was booed the moment she started to say that. We have to remember we're living in this world together. And I want others to look at who we are here, what we represent, because we represent the greatness of this country. And I thank you and I want to continue to